Hello, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Hello. It's time for the Wolfden Podcast. How are you doing? Well, I am just happy we are doing the show. First try. All right. First try. <coughs> I'm just happy we're doing the show today uh, and not yesterday. Because I don't think I'd be able to handle sifting through all of the BS news to try and find oh, the real ones. Oh, yeah. I'll I just tell pulled, you. Uh, I pulled all of the uh, uh, April 1st <coughs> stuff. Now yeah. I have an article about that. I got to move that chair. Or else when it switches to me any minute now, it'll just be a black <coughs> just screen. Just be a chair, yeah. a chair in the way. Um, um, well, there's a lot. There's plenty to talk about today. There is. There's a, yeah. there's a good There's a good chunk of, chunk of news to go through, everybody. Yeah, that we hope you, hope you what, like what do we news. have? Right on the top, the most important thing we have to talk about are Courtney and Shane from Smosh actually married. Now, this is something that happened <laughs> uh yesterday. I thought I saw uh Courtney in a in a thumbnail for what's his name's podcast, Anthony Anthony's podcast. Oh, well and I didn't watch probably. it because I don't care. I didn't but. watch that. But I saw this, and I was like, oh, they have such great chemistry all yeah. the time. That, But it would be like them to do a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was like, wait, is this real or, or what? Because it's right. April Fool. I mean, it's April Fool. It's yeah. got to yeah. be a bit. But then another post happened. A happy April 2nd. And here's another thing of them hanging out. So... Either like they the, actually did get married. So, so what happened? Either they're keeping the bit going or they actually got married. It would be a pretty good bit to yeah. actually get married and announce it on April Fool's yeah. Day. But it could all... It, I'm very confused. Right. I looked into this way too long. <laughs> Oh, anyway, okay. um, where are we? But for real, there's a lot to talk about. We yes. gotta uh, talk about. Uh, there's a lot. There's more people coming out and saying that uh, there's no games this year. Yeah, <laughs> and it looks like it's getting worse for one particular uh, video game console maker uh, in particular. Uh, there's that. We got shakeups at Nintendo going on. Not shakeups you think, but shakeups that could indicate. Something coming down the line. Wag my finger. Um, new new Xbox. New Xbox. New Xbox is dropping. Uh, we got Jim Ryan making some wild accusations about the PlayStation 2. On his way out. On his way out. And uh, and much more. And much more. But first, of course, we have to talk about how we uh, hit... F oh, look. There's the chair. We hit 15,000 <laughs> subscribers we here on the, on the channel on the podcast channel specifically thank all of you for all your help now make Yay. it a hundred thousand yeah now make it a hundred thousand <laughs> so we could get another plaque yeah no uh, but seriously thank you all for your continued dedication and support uh of us to us through us with us and did us. did you know we had fifteen thousand? yes because dad would not shut up about it on sunday we hit it like yesterday i got a notification on my phone that we yeah. had fifteen thousand. well dad was like making a big deal about it on saturday because that's all he cares about is whether or not this podcast is going to How are you going to gonna expand the brand? Yeah. Let me talk to your management. Like he's going like to, like that's going to that, fucking do anything. I'm not one to say that our father has care and energy, but when he says he wants to speak to our manager, I that is such care and energy. I want to know what that conversation would <laughs> be just, like. I might, I might let, let it happen because yeah. I just need to know what could possibly <laughs> happen between yeah. the two of them. Anyway, first before we get into anything, uh, April PlayStation Plus. Yes, uh, it's the brand new month, and this is not a joke. Uh, if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus, any tier. You get yourself some free games starting today. Um, and first, it's Immortals of Avium on... Ah! <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> Wrong button. False alarm. Everybody has a false alarm. This is why we're only at 15. <laughs> hey, I was on a podcast that had a lot more subscribers, and there were a lot more technical <laughs> difficulties. So maybe... That's what we need. That podcast now is, has like a full support system. So maybe you need to leave this one. And, I need to get a support and system. Still more technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> anyway.
anyway, for PlayStation Plus for the month of April, you get Immortals of Avium on the PlayStation 5, Minecraft Legends on the PS4 and PS5, and Skull the Hero Slayer on PS4. Everyone's favorite, Skull the Hero Slayer. Yeah. You can get a more generic name than that. Never heard of it in my Me life. Me neither. Oh, no, no. Generic, Will. There's only one L. That makes it cool. That makes it sick. Uh... Minecraft Legends, okay, I remember that. Yeah. I don't remember if people liked it. Uh, isn't that the Minecraft game where you don't do any crafting? Yeah, it's uh, an adventure game. Yeah. Or something. So, there you go. Uh, Immortals of Avium, I feel like that's not a good game. Uh, that That's like a fairly recent game. It like has a really high profile. It's like that magic first-person shooter. Yes, okay, I remember that now. But what's the Metacritic? I don't think it's very high. Because I only... Play games with a Metacritic of nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think like I don't think it reviewed very well, but 69. like sixty nine. Okay, oh, nice. I also play games with a Metacritic right, of, of sixty nine. This was a game they were really trying to like make a thing, and like it was obvious they were trying to like get people to like be interested in and play it. I think because they spent a lot of time and money in development, so they need to make that back. If I'm not mistaken, I think the stars television's Gina Torres. So they got to, like, make up for that. Gina Torres. He's from Firefly and Suits and other shows. Oh, that, but like, the main characters. Are, no, are not the main character, no. Uh, Wolf Den Dad in the chat says, let it happen and find out what I'll tell that management team of yours. And then also earlier in the chat, L Lodgy is bored said, a second marriage post has hit the gram. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right, so if you're interested in any of these games, now's your chance to get them yeah. for the subscription price or for, for the subscription yeah. you have already. For whatever tier of the subscription you have, it's there for you. Oh, and there's Overwatch 2 stuff. Oh, who cares? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do nobody, people care about nobody Overwatch? Nobody plays that game. I feel bad. Like, Over Overwatch was a good game, and then it was overnight not a good game anymore. <laughs> yeah, they really fucked it up. Yeah. They really did just the word. The, I. The, there was that they they activisioned it yeah uh they 100 percent activisioned it there was no reason to make a two right the only reason to make a two was to have a single player campaign mm -hmm. and then they axed the single player campaign so <laughs> there when i jumped back in to play two it was the exact same game and they got right. rid of the first game so yeah. like there it was just such an absolute it, it's, waste it's incredible it like goes to show you why you know, Blizzard worked a certain way and they worked really well that way. And then when notable idiot Bobby Kodak decided that every game that Activision puts out, whether it be under Activision or Blizzard, be Call of Duty, you know, that just shows um, how short-sighted and dumb that mentality is. I don't know. Not everyone can put out a Call of Duty every year. I don't know where you go from here. Because, like, the guy who, like... The, the the main game director left right because of all of those issues yeah um i don't know if it's fixable by microsoft now no yeah. i think they need to cut their losses wait a couple of years and then maybe put out an overwatch 3 that is you know overwatch one style multiplayer it, with it'll, a decent single player campaign it'll be called something else right it'll be like overwatch reborn forever or, yeah <laughs> and, and it'll be uh just the same multiplayer we've always had with uh, a campaign hopefully yeah anyway um what are we talking about oh yeah playstation plus stuff that's yeah. it there's those mm -hmm. games yeah congratulations uh what do we know anything about skull no no i don't know anything about S the skull do game. you people know anything about skull uh skull the hero slayer i'm gonna pull up a youtube video how about that or the Steam page, I guess. It, it's giving my Hollow Knight vibes. Yeah, well, I guess. Yeah. Hollow Knight vibes. Oh, but like enemies have a, have health bars. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Well, Me. try it out. It's just free if you have PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's jump into the Xbox news. But before we get into that... Uh, we got John McCheese. Thank you for the 15 months. Atif Faruqi. Thank you for the 20 months. Evening, gents. Did you guys hear about Game Informer going completely independent of GameStop? Thought that Ooh. was pretty cool news. Hope they take off. That is cool. 
That is I interesting. I saw some rumblings about that. Mm -hmm. Is it that they're completely independent? I think it's just that you don't need to buy a power up membership in order to get the subscription to game informer anymore like you can get it at a cheaper rate if you just get the subscription and not the power up membership i went to look up like game informer news and it's just giving me news from game informer <laughs> so <laughs> not really helping me here uh 1995 poppy thank you for the 13 months hey wolf fellas hope everyone's doing well i am well Thank I got you. this like weird pain in my wrists right here. I don't know how that happened, but other than that, I'm fine. Every time I go like this, I can, I can make my wrists crack on command. Ooh, 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 there it goes. That is not even an old man thing. Yeah. I've been that's been like that for like 10 years. <laughs> uh what else? Uh Dano Mac, thank you for the 13 months. Happy Tuesday, Wolf Dude. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. MF Ribcage says Skull is underrated as hell. Alright, go play okay. Skull then. Alright, check out Skull. Uh, and Illmaster is continuing the sub they got from H3 Catacomb. Well, thank you. It didn't come up for some reason. Uh, oh, and John, Justin Coley. Oh, my God. I remember oh, him. Oh, hey. He was like the first subscriber. Yes. <laughs> from a table in a basement to 15,000 subs on a separate dedicated channel. Great going, men. In gaming, men. as an avid PlayStation fanboy, PS Plus has been poor. Oh, he hates it. Doesn't okay. Like it. Fair enough. Well, thank you, Justin. Uh, for still being here. Yeah. <laughs> what did I see? Uh, Anti Farouk said uh, it's the top article on their website, uh, Game Informer. We love gaming magazines, and we're hoping if you're here, you do too. But ours can only survive with your support. For 1991, uh, the year of Game Informer's founding, our new standalone magazine subscription program sends a full year of 10 issues to your doorstop filled with exclusive cover stories, in-depth interviews uh, with game creators, long-form features, and retrospectives, previews of what's coming next in the gaming hobby, um, reviews of the most compelling games, and more. In recent months, uh, it's been sometimes difficult to know uh, how to get Game Informer in your mailbox. And for that, we apologize. Requests for an easy, no frills way for a print magazine subscription are by far the number one request we hear from you. And that's what we're delivering today. Uh, so, yeah, it just looks like it's Game Informer without the GameStop. They had a uh, falling out with GameStop uh, last year or two years ago. Okay. Remember there was like something where like GameStop just made posts on behalf of Game Informer and they were like, we didn't have any say in this, right? Right. right. There was like this big like blowout. Um, yeah, I st I, I'm not convinced that this is uh, Game Informer becoming its own separate entity i just think that this is a subscription without the gamestop right yeah i don't yeah. i mean as far as i know there's nothing indicating it's completely separate from gamestop uh ill message says bob i think you pulled the wrong slash old stl on the gotcha sp there were stls on pcb ways website yeah i uh was writing the video for that for this thing i'm, I'm making a video okay i was writing the video for this and uh saw that i used the old listing why is that listing up there well that shouldn't be it shouldn't be too big of a deal i'm tempted by that just to get non-junk mail on a regular basis yeah that's the thing it's like it's cool but like i have zero who's buying a magazine <laughs> you know be, people still want their physical media mm -hmm. and i feel like magazines are like the last bastion of like old school print news there was a time when i liked to go into barnes and noble and look at the magazine yeah they had like you know like they had all the best video game, game magazines, magazines. Yeah. they had like photoshop magazine yeah. they had like friggin uh digital mm -hmm. art magazine graphic fx or something yeah. um yeah there's a lot of cool stuff and yeah. a lot of them came with little demos and stuff for like software you could try out uh but that like I bought one once and I was like, this is all I need is this one. I don't need to buy one every month. I know because my wife wanted to find, I forget what magazine it was because there's an interview with somebody she liked in it. And I like, I, I didn't know where to go for it. Like I went to Barnes and Noble, but their magazine section is alien to me now. Yeah. It's like all this like random, like spam filler magazines 
and gun magazines. It's literally there are a lot of gun there's magazines. A lot of, there's a lot of gun magazines in Micro Center. Yeah. <laughs> Very weird. Right when you're walking out, you just mm-hmm. blast it with guns. Um, this is something you get at magazines, is something you get at the airport. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to go to the airport, honey. Not, not <laughs> to say that Game Informer shouldn't exist. I'm no, obviously, yes. Just. The, the to format me, it's in. To me, Game Informer is an online outlet. Right. I know that they're primarily a magazine and they're mm-hmm. tied heavily with GameStop because I used to sell Game Informer subscriptions. Yeah. But uh, to me, they're mostly an online outlet mm-hmm. as far as I know. Um, anyway. Talk about the Diddy allegations. No. No. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with you? Like, like we, like we, like we <laughs> what, know what fucking we anything say? about that. <laughs> um, all right. Let's actually talk about Xbox now. Yes. Jesus so this is actually something that was reported on last week on Tuesday that we missed. Oh, um, okay. But I feel like it is still important enough to talk about this week. Okay. Uh, because some publishers reportedly are not sure why they keep supporting Microsoft. I, that's a pretty big thing to talk about. I understand. I, I I see why they would say that. Reportedly, some third-party video game publishers aren't sure why they keep making and supporting games for Xbox consoles due to poor sales in Europe. Uh, in a new podcast from GameIndustry.biz, the head of the outlet, Chris String, explained that while at the 2024 Game Developers Conference, he heard that flatlining Xbox hardware sales in Europe have made some companies question what the point is of continuing to support Microsoft's brand and its various consoles due to a declining audience and lack of growth. The other thing I heard, I heard it from a very prominent company and one not so prominent was Xbox performance in Europe is just flatlining, said Drang on the podcast. I can follow, you can follow our monthly coverage in the games market uh, and you can see that Xbox sales are are falling and it's been falling throughout the last year and it's falling even harder this year. Uh, Dring further said that one major company who reportedly released a big game last year said, I don't know why we bothered supporting it. Oh. We, yeah. Uh, we mentioned on previous podcasts that we'd heard retailers in Europe are considering or had already been cutting back their Xbox stock on the shelves, hardware games, and that kind of thing. And now, uh, now you've got publishers, third-party publishers going, we're putting in a lot of effort trying to create a Series S version and an X version of the game when, to be honest with you, for us, the, PC, the market is PC and PS5. So, something, it's, I think, very soon, Xbox is dropping the Series S. See, I don't know, because like I recently watched in Austin Evans' uh, short, and he made, brought up a good point. The Steam Deck isn't that much different from a Series S in terms of power. Then why are they and, all bitching? Yeah, and like <laughs> people are now like optimizing games for Steam Deck, and that yeah. can easily make games optimized for the Series S. So yeah, like, and that's a very good point. Steam but... inadvertently like saved the Series S. Yeah, but they're not bitching about optimizing games for Steam Deck. Right. For some reason. Well, because Steam Deck is an accessory to Steam. Like, yeah. the main focus is still getting it on Steam. Also, I, there's less pressure for to... There's less pressure to optimize it for Steam Deck because yeah. Steam Deck users are okay with much less uh, performance. Right. Yeah. And I think the fact that Microsoft explicitly wants... Uh, yeah, performance and feature feature parity between the two versions. I mean, developers do want that great on deck little checkbox. Yeah, but they don't. Steam Deck users do not care if it's seven twenty p thirty frames. Yeah, you know, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd imagine that it is harder probably to optimize for the Series S than it is to optimize for the Steam Deck. Yeah. I think Valve gives really good tools to. Uh, yeah, things to just work. Everybody that I talk to at like PAX and stuff, all these developers that do like these indie games, there's not, it's never anything graphically intensive. Right. But they all say they did nothing to optimize it for Steam Deck. It just happened to work on Steam Deck. Okay. The only thing that they might do is change the font size. Right. That's the most yeah. that, that I've heard anybody do for Steam Deck. Um, but yeah, the the actual like news here is that like uh, publishers don't know why they don't know why they're even doing this anymore. Yeah, I mean, so that, that's what I say when I wake up in the morning. It's 
<laughs> it's it's because of the Series S, and that makes perfect sense. Well, it's the Series S, and just like the sales aren't there. So this says that the sales aren't there in Europe, right? Are they there in America? I mean, look, we historically they've never been there in Japan. Yeah, they're currently they're not there in Europe. Mm-hmm. That's like the two biggest market, two of the biggest markets right there. America is probably the, uh, Microsoft's biggest market. Yeah, but they're losing that to Sony. Yeah, that's. So, where I'm confused. Yeah. Because it doesn't like the market the market is anywhere for them right now. Yeah, and that's why they're focusing so heavily yeah. on not being a console manufacturer. Uh according to I'll continue. According to Drang, from what he heard at GDC twenty twenty four, Xbox is in real trouble as a hardware manufacturer. I don't I didn't really oh. factor in that some developers and publishers might just go, Yeah, is there any any point? And that is when you can lose it. Uh, they need to make sure it makes sense to continue to make versions of their games for Xbox, explained Dring. For years now, we've heard Microsoft downplay the importance of selling Xbox consoles as the company has struggled to keep up with Nintendo and Sony's sales of their respective devices. In 2023, Microsoft admitted in court documents oh. that it lost the console war in 2001 and is still losing to this day. We've even seen data suggesting that the PS5 is outselling the Xbox Two to one. We've heard that before. Yes, yeah, for sure. We've been hearing that for years now. Uh, but like Dring, uh, it's always assumed that as long as Microsoft was willing to keep making boxes and selling them, publishers would keep making games for Xbox. However, it seems flatlining sales in Europe and a sense that Microsoft is no longer as committed to Xbox hardware as before, publishing previously exclusive games on PS5, for example, has led to, as Dring explained in the podcast, a sense of confusion over what's going on at Microsoft. And sure, some people are still buying Xbox consoles, uh, but if but if that number keeps dipping and the audience is not growing or shrinking, uh, it makes it makes sense that publishers looking to cut costs might decide an Xbox port isn't worth it anymore in 2024 and beyond. Uh, it's interesting because they said that like when the xbox series s and x were released everyone was like that's gonna be hard for development and they assured everybody that it wouldn't be uh and i kind of bought into that um and they also said that they would uh that every game that works for the series x will work for the series s yes and they'd be going against that if they axed the series s pretty much well, again, I don't think axing a console is the problem here. I think the problem here is that, you know, regardless of what system is being sold, the games are not being sold. You know, I was in Target the other day, and the the physical console space for Sony and Microsoft is getting pretty abysmal because, like, it's just one aisle. On one side is Xbox stuff. The other side is PlayStation stuff. And... Like the the Xbox side is significantly more barren than the Sony side, mm-hmm. and on the one end cap where they have the new games, I think I saw one Xbox version of the game. The rest is the P- the PlayStation version of the game. Interesting. So is this but, Target? This is Target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the PS5 version of Skull and Bones, the Xbox version of Skull and Bones, the PlayStation version of WWE 2K. Not the Xbox version, the PlayStation version of MLB The Show, not the Xbox version. Yeah. It was just all the PlayStation version of every game, but so, let's call them modes. So it does look like there's less and less of an incentive on the retail side, even to stock Xbox games. We even there was even that story a while back that uh, Walmart was dis, um, discontinuing selling uh, Starfield. Yeah, or they were clearancing on Starfield, and they were scaling back on how many Xbox games they're going to have in stock. Yeah, but if they could just, it it there there seems to be a concern that they're they have to make the game for this dying console or the console that nobody's buying games for, right? Right. They have to make the game for that console, and then also they have to optimize it for a much weaker version of that same console. Right. So that's. That that's where where these developers are saying this isn't worth it. It's already not worth it to put it on Xbox because nobody's buying the game on Xbox. Right. And now we also have to optimize it for we have to do more work right. 
that shouldn't have to be the case. So if I were Microsoft, I would be like, okay, you don't have to do it on the Series S. But I think the problem is the Series S is still, the Series S is selling better than the Series X because of its low price point. And, you know, it's their entry point. It's the Game yeah. Pass entry point. You know, they weren't able to get that $100 streaming box out. So the Series yeah. S is their gateway into the living room. That's the Game Pass so machine. So I still think that a majority of these developers who are saying that their game cannot run on the Series S, is they're just not trying. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with you there. As someone who's not a game developer at all, I, yeah. think, mo I think that they're just making excuses. Mm -hmm. And I think that's evident with like Gotham Knights. Yes. Where that game runs at 30 across everything. And yeah. they're like, and that guy was, that was one of the guys who was who bitching explicitly the most. explicitly blamed the Series S. Yeah, yeah. they blamed the Series S. The yeah. game isn't optimized for fucking anything. And yeah. that's why it doesn't run good on the Series S. Yeah. It, it's showing the most flaws. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think it's easy to blame the Series S, yeah. but I could see where you w wouldn't want to put the work into it because yeah. because why put all that like like Larian sold so many uh, Baldur's Gate three yeah uh, and they're like why would we why would we change the game just for this one little console right. nobody's gonna buy anything for and then Microsoft was like we'll help you do it yeah and I think Microsoft was like okay you don't have to have split screen on it or yeah. something they, yeah they, like, they were they able to compromise. make concessions for Baldur's Gate but at the same time you know if I was making a game. And I had trouble putting it on Series S. I would say to myself, "Why is Larry and get special treatment yeah. over everybody else?" Yeah, I'd be pissed. Yeah, okay, it's Baldur's Gate three is the big, biggest selling game of the year or whatnot. You want it on your system, but at a certain point, like other people are going to start asking, "Why are we not getting the same treatment as well, Larry?" There's going to be more and more concessions. There's yeah. going to be more. Microsoft's right. going to pull back a little bit and let give people more leeway, or they're just going to have to straight up say, "Hey." This is only going to work on the Xbox Series right. X. This is not going to work on the Series S. And that's why I think they're making a discless white Series X. That's going to be the inter intermediary. Spoiler warning for later in the show. All right, we can talk about it now. All right, let's talk about it right I now. Think, I think it's relevant. All right, we'll talk about it right now. Fuck it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Where did I even put it? <laughs> I remember where I put it. I see it. It's under the April Fool stuff. Okay, I'm because I think this is part of I I I think this might replace the Series S. Uh, I don't know, especially if they're also releasing a whole other console. Because this is we already know that they have the 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 Brooklyn version or whatever. The, well, the, this the I cylinder. Think is, I think this is supposed to be Brooklyn, the white Series what's the X. What's the black cylinder? I think that was just concept art for Brooklyn, and I think they ultimately. Well, that was said to be more powerful than was it? the X. Yes, that was supposed to be more powerful than the Series X. Brooklyn. Maybe it wasn't codenamed Brooklyn, but the cil the cylinder is the cil is the cylinder Brooklyn. The cylinder was Brooklyn. The Xbox, not a box. Xbox Brooklyn. <laughs> the Xbox no edges. Yeah uh fair all right i'll just read the it was with an i or something yeah i'll read the you read that i'm gonna look in the you, xbox you look up brooklyn. brooklyn okay back in february xputer reported that microsoft has plans to release a new xbox console this year a white colored series x that features digital only format similar to the xbox series s now recent developments have led xputer's source to reveal via email that this console is going uh what this console is going to look like when it hits shelves this summer the photo of the unit sent exclusively to xputer uh aren't exactly top quality but they should be able to illustrate its overall design uh to a reasonable extent there's a clear absence of a disk drive on the front on the back the peripheral ports the peripherals and ports remain pretty much the same and this is the part of the show where bob would be showing you uh the pictures of the of the white Xbox Series X. No, if he I'm, I'm in deep with the Brooklyn. If he right wasn't, now. you know, too busy going down a rabbit hole mm -hmm. of uh, what Xbox Brooklyn is, so I'll just describe it to you. <laughs> we are currently looking at a white colored Xbox Series X. Okay, uh, I'll similar show to it. the I'll one that you have uh, in your system right now, or not, because nobody's buying this thing. It's literally just a white Xbox Series is, look, X. That's the back of it. Same exact ports as on the back of a standard black Series X. 
This is the big difference. Ooh. The front doesn't have the disc drive. It kind of looks worse without the it disc drive. It does, actually. Do <laughs> you remember the um, the Xbox One All Digital Edition? The Xbox One S All Digital Edition, the SAD? Yeah. That, that looked like the Series S. Yeah. Like, yeah. that uh, looks worse than the traditional Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It, it needs that disc drive. Well, I think you're right. I think this might be the Brooklyn. Yeah. So, the they do say. Please remember they used the hashtag. What was right in the comments? In in the leak, it yeah. says that it has a six nanometer die shrink for improved efficiency. Yeah, that That's doesn't just, mean improved uh, performance. Yeah, it doesn't mean improved performance. Yeah. It just means that it, uh, the technologies in it are going to be more efficient, and it's going to be like yeah. a slight improvement, kind of like how. The PlayStation 5 Slim is a slight improvement. The yeah. OLED Switch has a slight improvement. The uh, Steam Deck OLED had a slight improvement. Yeah. It had different stuff in it that was slightly more powerful, but it's not going to be uh, enough. It's not going to be a, 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 a substantial improvement. It's not going to yeah. be like the PlayStation 5 Pro that we're Correct. hearing rumblings about. This also doesn't seem to be that one console that Phil Spencer said is going to be the most significant leap in gaming That's ever. what I thought was Brooklyn. Yeah, no, yeah. it's literally just a discless Xbox One, uh, Xbox Series X. Uh, okay, so when are we getting? When did he say we're getting the most significant leap in in gaming? I don't, I don't remember. Was that supposed to be? I don't think it was supposed year? to be this year. Um, because this, when I see this, when I see this white Xbox Series X, mm-hmm. I'm thinking goodbye white Xbox Series S. No, I think this is just supposed to live side by side with the. With what's out there right now. We already have three Xbox series. Yes. We have the we have- white series S. Yes. For $300. Yes. It's hard to do MSRP because they always go on sale. Yeah. $300 uh, white Xbox series S. Yeah. $350 black Xbox series S. Yes. That has a one terabyte drive. Slightly bigger drive. Yeah. Then there's the five hundo Xbox series X that is black. Yes. With the disc drive. Yes. The only one with the disc drive. Yes. And now we are getting a fourth, a fourth Xbox has hit the stream. Right. Uh, It is a white Xbox series X. No disc drive. Correct. Now, uh, this article doesn't know about price. It's expecting it to be less yeah. than the series, but oh, God. there's all, well, here's the thing I've heard. I've seen other articles and rumors and stuff speculate that that cause the Brooklyn spec yeah. mentioned a two terabyte drive, which would make sense for a discless version. Cause you would need more room to store all your games. Yeah. So I've seen people speculate that even though this doesn't have a disc drive, because it's going to have a larger solid state drive, it will cost the same as a standard disk series X. This Brooklyn leak says it, it's calling it Xbox series X refresh. Yeah. So this could, I, I can't wrap my head around them refreshing the Xbox series X yeah. by removing the disk drive. I can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> I mean that would that's be That's not a refresh. That's a refresh. It's the it's re it's bringing back the system in a new style. Oh, a new fun style everyone will love. Yeah, <laughs> removing a feature. <laughs> I mean, we know that the future is going to be digital. Right. Be as much digital. as it sucks. As much as it sucks and we don't like it, that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, I think that uh kids these days don't really care that much. Right. But that being said, I think if you see that, you know, a feature is removed and the system is the same price. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That's weirding me out. Yeah. I don't understand these pricing structures because we, this, again, this is the fourth Xbox. Yeah. And we got $300, 350 and 500 Yeah. And if this is also going to be 500 why would I want this? Exactly. I don't, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a market for this. Uh, as it stands no I, this doesn't make any sense to yeah me. i think unless it was to get rid of the series s and that doesn't seem to be the case right i went no. through a whole roller I, again, coaster i would emotions. imagine that the the series s will stay on the market because it, it sells better than the series x because of its price point yeah and it's the the entry model it's what people get to you know get the dip their foot into the game pass system it's the easiest way to get into game pass 
they should focus on giving developers tools to make things you know work right on this yeah. on the series s or something but again i i mean will that stop people from blaming the series s probably probably not i haven't heard anybody blame the steam deck ever I haven't heard no. any developer be like, oh, I can't get it to run on the Steam Deck. Yeah. I mean, it, I've heard things not running on the Steam Deck. Well, but. I think it, on that front, if they can't get it to run on the Steam Deck, they just can't get it to run on the Steam Deck. They can still put the game on Steam. Yeah. You know, if you can't get your game to run on the Series S, you can't get your game on Xbox, period. The only... that I mean, there's a lot of games that won't run on Steam Deck because of the launcher, because of the anti-cheat or whatever, but the only game that I could think of that can't run on the steam deck because it just physically can't run is dogma 2 or whatever the game dragon's, that, dogma, dragon's yeah. dogma that just came out um that apparently physically cannot run on the steam deck. right but people are trying yeah and i bet you they'll get it to work yeah absolutely but i also hear that that game just doesn't run good at all period uh, that game is also loaded with weird ass microtransactions like fast travel why are people playing this game I i'm hearing know. nothing but horrible things know. about this game Apparently the first one was excellent and people like were excited for this one. And then Cap- Capcom's like, hey, guess what? We know how much you love microtransactions. Capcom. Here's all of them. Capcom's weird. They are very weird. All right. Uh, so now, um, now I don't know what to think about this white Xbox. I don't know what to think about Microsoft's entire situation anymore. You know, that, uh, that podcast that Phil Spencer went on was like his attempt to like... You know, just say remain calm all as well. But we can clearly see, you know, there's smoke. So there's must be fire behind him at some point. I mean, I keep saying that they're playing a different game than everybody else because they're, they just don't seem focused on selling consoles. But then right. here we are trying to sell consoles. Yeah, like they may, they may say they're not focused. They, they may say they're not in the same game, but they clearly are in the same game. Which makes sense. Like, obviously, you want to sell systems. You want people to buy Xboxes. Yeah. But... It's very clear that they are losing here. Hit us with a handheld. Yeah, that a might help. Handheld. That might actually help their situation. Yeah. Sell it for the same price as a, as a Series X. Sell it for five hundred dollars. Yeah, and I bet you it'll do fantastic. Yeah, it'll rival the Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. Just because it's Microsoft. Yeah. It's Microsoft making a handheld. Like the Steam Deck is always going to be a great value, and it's always going to be a good right. thing to to have. But Getting a name like Microsoft to make a physical hardware that is also a a, a game console mm-hmm. will get people more interested. That's going to be in Best Buy. You yeah, know? that'll get the mainstream more interested in like a PC handheld type yeah. situation. All right. Anyway, uh, Dano Mock, thank you for the thirteen months, and Rainbow Rooster, thank you for the gifted sub. Uh. There's more to talk about with the games industry dying. Yes. We're talking a lot about Microsoft. This is turning into Microsoft is dying. Yeah. Or Xbox. Xbox is, is dying. Dying. But I mean, like, uh, I feel like a healthy Xbox is good for the industry and they're not healthy right now. So that's not good for the industry. But also, neither is the Epic Games Store. Uh, indie devs say that Xbox Game Pass and Epic uh, exclusive deals have dried up. Uh, some indie developers have revealed that deals regarding Xbox Game Pass and the Epic Game Store exclusivity have dried up and are not nearly as lucrative as they were before. At the Game Developers Conference 2024, Darkest Dungeon director Chris uh, Barasa uh, said that Microsoft has decreased the scope for getting games onto Game Pass since the service began, and Epic Games has done similar things when it comes to securing exclusives for its PC storefront. The gold rush is over. I come from the Northwest Territories. Uh, The town I'm from was built on gold. And then they found diamonds for the North, Barassa said. What Um, the fuck? It's a metaphor, Bob. Uh, (laughs) Maybe another paradigm shift is waiting for us. But I definitely think the scale of the deals I'm hearing about is significantly diminished from the big swinging days. Uh, Certainly, we got our epic deal at the right time. Big swinging days. Yeah. I don't like how this guy talks. Just <laughs> tell me what you're trying to say. He's, what he's trying to say is that uh, they got their exclusivity deal with Epic at the right time because now they're not handing out the same kind of deals anymore. They're less. What's a paradigm? I believe it's pronounced paradigm. No, you're wrong. It's paradigm. 
Mega also, big swinging days. Does that mean dick swinging? That's what I thought. I think that's what he's but saying. I know what he means, but that's not where my mind went. I I don't know what he means. Well, let's, go, go what on. about uh, Mega Crit, the developer behind Slay the Spire, uh, co-founder Casey Yano, said he's talked to at least five small teams uh, with 35 or fewer employees during GDC. They all express similar sentiment that budget cuts have been occurring out, uh, everywhere and funding has been canceled. Uh, we've... De- We've definitely, I'm sorry, we're definitely very privileged to be able to self fund, said Yano. Otherwise, I'd be very, very scared right now. Well, it seems that, well, it seems like Game Pass might not be providing great deals for indie developers nearly uh, as much anymore. The service is ramping up on adding bigger titles. Diablo 4 is the latest one to join the subscription on both console and PC. Epic Games is also looking to improve the storefront with more free games, a better download manager, and better offline state in 2024. So they're not spending the same amount of money as they used to with trying to get games on Game Pass or exclusive to the Epic Games Store. And that's a big deal because a lot of developer, a lot of indie developers were using that money to help fund the development of their games. Yeah, this is just, I think, not so much uh, an example of Microsoft losing it or, or dying right. or, or losing money. This is a an example of the whole industry uh, imploding right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, like scaling back. <laughs> everyone is scaling back this year specifically. Yeah. Um, the big, the people, all of the people with the money <sighs> Uh, are holding on to their money because yeah. uh, they don't see things going great in the games industry right now, and they're saving it for the future games industry right. stuff. Uh, this is uh, yet another example of capitalism going awry. Yes, because <laughs> there's a lot of people with a lot of money, and they're holding it right now, and we don't get any of it. Yeah, but I talked about this in my last video because I was talking about all of the stuff at PAX and how there wasn't really that much stuff at PAX. I didn't put in my video, I talked to one developer and I didn't record it because I was just talking to him. I didn't know it was going to be an interesting conversation, but also I don't think he would have told me all the stuff that he did if I was recording him. Their their publisher was Sabre, which was owned by Embracer Group. Right. And he was talking, everything's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're fucked. And like, uh, they were talking about how stressful it was that like at any moment they could just, their whole thing could be, the whole the plug could be pulled. Yeah. So I was like, this is great. I'm going to make my whole video about, <laughs> about how all the funding's drying up and all these people are afraid they're going to lose their jobs. And then uh, all of the other developers I talked to were like, no, everything's fine. Because yeah. they're all indie developers and they all pretty much work for themselves. And the yeah. publishers that they work with uh, seem to have been fine. Or I guess maybe I'm just talking to people who have games coming out soon. So, like, yeah. I wasn't talking to people who had games canceled on them. Um, so, I don't know. Just sitting on this side of it, it's very clear to see that there's not a lot of stuff coming out this year. Yeah. Uh, and we're hearing from a lot of developers that uh, this year is going to be rough and they're holding stuff. Uh, we're also hearing that people are scared that they're going to lose their funding. We're also hearing that it's impossible to get funding. Even last year was hard to get funding for indie yeah. creators. Um, but if you're an independent creator uh, and you don't need the funding, uh, now's your now's your time. Uh-huh. Uh, because you're not going to have much competition with the big AAA stuff. But yeah, that's why Microsoft uh, isn't giving money to... to, to developers for game pass right now because right. nobody is giving yeah developers money right now how is this year rough when last year they made so much money capitalism yeah uh, they didn't make enough money they may have made money but they didn't make growth that's the second half of the capitalism is because you know just because you made a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean you made enough money to grow it's got to be more and more and more and more and more and more and more yeah. every, every single year yeah. and uh that's just not sustainable for any yeah it's for anything yeah uh danny o'dwyer has a video i haven't seen it yet but he's literally that's the whole video yeah is is that uh part of it a uh, part of his video i think is that uh the big triple a games are costing more and more to make and more and more to buy and yeah. the audience for the triple a games hasn't gotten bigger yeah 
So like the like the games the the pe people who play games like the like the the games industry has gotten bigger and bigger. Right. There's more and more money in it, and people who are there's more and more people playing games, but they're playing like Fortnite and fucking you know Call of Duty yeah. and Candy Crush. You know mm -hmm. they're playing like the big stuff, and right. that's it. Mm -hmm. So the people who are playing like Spider Man and freaking Alan Wake and like all the like big AAA stuff yeah. that like everyone's talking about, Baldur's Gate. That audience has not grown. Yeah, that's plateaued. That, that's yeah. interesting. I, I haven't considered that. Yeah. And th that just means more and more people are going to be interested in indie games. Yeah. Anyway. There you go. Games industry's dying. Everything's terrible. Yeah, we expect the crash real soon. Real soon. Uh, do we want to... Is the shakeups at Nintendo relevant? Um, kind of. It goes. It kind of goes along with like, you know, there how there's a there's all of this like change going on in the game industry right now. It's a different kind of change than what was Xbox is going through. Let's let's go. All let's, right, let's do it. All right, Nintendo of America is restructuring the small army of contractors that helps test its games and hardware in its Washington state headquarters, the company confirmed to Kotaku. Uh, according to four current and former contractors, the result is a massive downsizing that comes amid layoffs across the rest of the video game industry and after the Mario Maker reportedly delayed the launch of the Switch 2 uh, until I 2025. I, I know, it's that. like... It's that game. That's why people don't like Kotaku because of wordplay like that. That's the <laughs> only reason. No other reason at all. Uh, these changes will involve uh, some contractor assignments ending as well as the creation of a significant number of new full-time employees. A spokesperson for Nintendo told Kotaku in an email. Uh, contractors at Nintendo of America who feel undervalued and underpaid have long called on the company to make them full-time red badge employees instead of exploiting loopholes and seasonal work requirements. Uh, while some of them are now finally getting converted to direct hires, others, including testers with over 10 years of experience, are getting the boot, although Nintendo says everyone impacted will receive severance packages. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice of them. Uh, when contacted for comment, a spokesperson for Nintendo provided the following statement. Nintendo of America has reorganized its product testing functions to drive greater global integration and game development efforts. Uh, the changes will also better align Nintendo of America with inter interregional testing procedures and operations. These changes will involve some contractor assignments ending, as well as the creation of a significant number of new full-time employee positions for all assignments that are ending. The contractors agencies with NOA support will offer severance packages and provide assistance during the transition. Uh, for those contractors associates uh, who will be leaving us, we are tremendously grateful for the important contributions they made to our business. And we extend our heartfelt thanks uh, for their hard work and services at Nintendo. Uh, it's not immediately clear how many total employees we let go or have or not have their contracts renewed. According to four current and former employees, the restructuring could affect over 100 contractors and most of those being converted to full time status appear to be getting moved out of the software testing. Uh, this would be the first mass layoff at Nintendo since uh, even larger scale cuts across competitors in the console space like Sony and Microsoft earlier this year, though it does not appear to impact any existing full-time employees. The shift comes during a recent lull in Nintendo of America's testing department, three contractors told Kotaku. Uh, they said there had been no new major first-party games in the testing pipeline, and none of them were aware of anyone having hands-on time with the upcoming Switch 2. Now, that is the part that is a little troublesome. Yeah. Despite previous hopes, it would arrive as early as the second half of 2024. Uh, they also weren't sure how Nintendo of America could continue to test massive games like Tears of the Kingdom, which was praised for its technical performance and lack of bugs with the new cuts. Uh, Nintendo declined to comment on the status of the testing pipeline. According to initial reports from Brazilian journalist um, Pedro Henrique Luti Lipe, um, yeah, which was later corroborated by VGC Eurogamer and Bloomberg, the Switch 2 was recently delayed until next year. VGC reported um, that the change was to give Nintendo more time to support the new console launch with big first-party games similar to how Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, and Mario Odyssey all helped the Switch in its uh, initial year. Uh, it's. I think it might be possible that they're testing 
that stuff with other teams. You think so? Yeah, like, why would they? Well, like, what? Well, the whole thing is like they, they had a dedicated testing department. Yeah. And now they're scaling down the testing department because they got nothing big coming out this year. Yeah, I guess maybe they have to maybe they have maybe they're they're Yeah, I mean they delayed the, the, the switch too. Yeah. So that probably means they also delayed the games. So there's probably gonna be a couple months where they're not using these testers. So right. maybe they just Figured we'll hire them back. We'll we'll hire more people, you know, later down the line when we have projects for them, <sighs> which is concerning. Yeah, but um, I think it's also possible there's just a completely different team that's working on future stuff because they don't want those those people to leak, uh, right what they're working on. Like yeah. these guys just straight up were like, yeah, we didn't work on any Switch Two stuff. Yeah, you know, like they would have said, yeah, we worked on Switch Two stuff, yeah. and that would have <laughs> fucking blown everything up. Yeah, so. There's, yeah. They're probably playing the Switch 2 and future software a little closer to the chat, uh, chest. Right. Um, until it gets a little closer to launch, then they'll have a team like this again, probably. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Nintendo's been doing fine. Uh, they're, uh, but maybe they're scaling back similarly to other, why other companies. I would imagine scaling so. Back, yeah. Or scaling back in different ways, you know. Yeah, they got rid of uh, one of the big uh, developers, like in one of the big first party developers. They moved them in house. Like, yeah, like they, uh, everybody thought they were going to be fired, but they just moved them in. Right. Uh, so they're restructuring for sure, but mm -hmm. I think that they're probably doing just fine comparatively to the whole, whole yeah. rest of the industry. Okay. So, anyway. I don't have a button. <laughs> Wait, like this. Backlog! 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 All wonder, right, boys and girls. I wonder what the neighbors think of the backlog. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, backlog time. What's uh, backlog, Will? The back is a segment of the wolf den podcast where we look at our video game collection every game we've ever bought over almost 40 years of being on this godforsaken God planet uh we've put into an excel spreadsheet to keep track of everything and today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it you're looking at number 339 339 and that is mortal kombat Jesus fucking 11 Christ. for the Nintendo Switch. 11? Yeah. Oh, I was hoping it was one. <laughs> one would have been good. 11 Wait, I have which, not played Which at Mortal all. Kombat 1 are we talking about here? Because now there's, oh, there's now two. there's like fucking seven. No. Yeah. <laughs> Mortal, no Kombat Mortal Kombat 11, 11. Which you played which and I you played bought on for the, the Switch. Switch. Yes. Which is the worst version. It's the worst version, but it's still a good version. So to back up, I've been a fan of the way NetherRealm has rebooted Mortal Kombat and like uh, revamped it since the 2011 Mortal Kombat. Okay. That game is excellent. Um, Mortal Kombat X, the follow-up, was also really good. So I was excited for Mortal Kombat 11 going into it. And I was even more excited that it was going to be on the Switch. Because now I can play Mortal Kombat on the toilet. And that's the best way to that's play That's the games. best way to play it. I didn't play it on the toilet. I actually played it, uh, I think it was on a family trip to Vegas. I played it going and coming on the plane. I managed to beat the whole game. <laughs> going uh, and coming. Going and coming. Also the best way to play yeah. video games. Yes. Um, so, Mortal Kombat 11. It's the third in this uh, current timeline of Mortal Kombat games. Um, if you played a Mortal Kombat game, you're going to be very familiar with how this works. Um beat the shit out of somebody with special moves in the most gloriously violent way possible uh for the switch version people are like why is it on the switch um there's no way this is going to be as good as it is on the other systems i am here to tell you that even though the game significantly looks like butt it plays perfectly it yeah. runs at 60 frames per second during combat there's no lag in the actual what's, fights. What's this 3D part? That, I believe, is the crypt. 
So in all in the recent Mortal Kombat games, there was the crypt where you get to go into like this. It's like a hub world. Hub world, not really a hub world, more like a, a separate section of the game where you can like, you know, uh, look at like bonus content, uh, different costumes, concept art, and whatnot. Um, and at launch, that looks even worse because there was like a lot of fog and you couldn't see it. I think they fixed it since then. Um, but I didn't really spend much time in there. I mostly spent my time like actually playing the game, playing the story mode of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, like first the switch, it, it plays just as well as the other versions. Yeah. Like this, the crypt, as you can see in that video clip, there was, there's just fog like between yeah, you can't, the, yeah, you can't see, anything. see anything even though it's the same spot but that's that's one thing i was really interested in about this yeah. game is that uh it it does look bad and there were a lot of memes about how bad it looks and all the graphical glitches and whatnot but it's a highly competitive game yeah it just needs to feel the same across all platforms and for my money it does i played yeah. the game exclusively in portable mode and like it, it ran perfectly fine, and that gives hope for other competitive games, yes. uh, other games that aren't on the Switch for similar reasons. Well, like, it gave hope, and then they released uh, Mortal Kombat One last year, the most recent version, and that game not only looked like butt, but it didn't run at all. Yeah, so yeah. they kind of screwed the pooch on that one, which that is disappointing because Mortal Kombat Eleven works so well. Um, I do like. I mean, like is a strong word because they're not really good, good stories, but I do enjoy the story modes in these games because they are like fun, interesting, like deep dives into like, you know, the Mortal Kombat lore and stuff. Yeah. And I know a lot of people like genuinely liked the Mortal Kombat 11 story. I did not. And I'll explain <laughs> why. Because so Mortal Kombat 2011 was like the reboot. It was like the Star Trek 2009 where like they went back in time to like, try to fix the timeline but wound up creating like a new alternate timeline and that was called mortal Kombat. that was just called mortal Kombat. okay yes fuck yes i know um but that was a good game I, and i like that storyline the best then there was mortal Kombat x which pretty much force awakens everything so there's a time jump and like you're dealing with the old characters but also the next generation of characters so you have johnny cage and sonya blades kid Jax's kid uh kung lao's like nephew and stuff all dealing with the next threat of outworld and that was also really cool and introduced this whole new set of characters that i actually really enjoyed playing as mortal kombat 11 just brings back the original lineup and tries to like make time travel a big part of it even though that's what they did in mortal kombat 2011 and it winds up having this like weird story where like the past two games didn't really matter and so they're basically starting over again in the closer of the trilogy, so to speak. <clears throat> and it's so just, this is a trilogy. So it's one X and eleven. It's 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 so, it's zero. It fuck. No, no, it gets worse <laughs> because uh, people don't just call it Mortal Kombat 2011. They also call it Mortal Kombat Nine because it's the yes. ninth game in the series. Well, that nine because it's the ninth game in the series. Yeah. Okay. That is what it should be called that's what it should be Mortal called. Mortal Kombat 9 yeah because you have 9 yeah and you have X, X which is 10 and yeah. 11 yes and then 1 1 Mortal Kombat 1 is the is the direct sequel to Mortal Kombat 11 because at the end of Mortal Kombat 11 spoiler alert Liu Kang becomes the fire god and resets the timeline again okay completely starting from scratch okay so so there are <laughs> Three Mortal Kombat ones. Yes. Like it's like Xbox One. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But fucking terrible. It is terrible. Um, um but the gameplay is very enjoyable. I'm seeing in this uh IGN review that there's a network error every five seconds. Mm -hmm. Is that what is that about? I think at launch the network uh connection, like online play, was not very good. I believe it has been fixed since well, then. It looked like they were running into network errors before, without even being on the network, like like without doing multiplayer stuff. Like it looked like it was just imposing on the menus. I mean, I played this game on a plane, okay, and didn't really have any. How far any after with... launch did you play it? Not that far after launch. Okay, right, maybe I, don't I know, know. I know a lot. Of, like Mortal Kombat X did the same. Maybe thing. Maybe that fixed it for you. Maybe, maybe. playing on airplane mode. Maybe. 
I do know that like starting with Mortal Kombat X, there was a big focus on like online components. Like there were, you know, challenge towers that you didn't directly compete in and stuff. There was um a big push for like DLC and microtransactions and keeping the game alive through like online means. Uh where like even if you weren't if you were just playing the single player, it would still upload your data to like see where you ranked amongst everyone else and how everyone else was playing. So like the recent spat of Mortal Kombat games have had a big online focus, even if you're not focused on like what is going on online. And that's yeah. honestly been a big problem because it actually prevents you from playing the game the way you traditionally want to play a Mortal Kombat game, which is just jump in and get to fighting. I like some of these fighting games when you pick a character and you do like the campaign for that one character. Right. It's like 20 minutes long. And you just beat up a bunch of guys and then you get like their ending and then you have to play other people. Yeah. And their you still do that in Mortal Kombat. The way they've been doing it, which the way I actually like is um, it goes in chapters and each chapter is one character's perspective of okay. the story. That's cool too. They, they, and, I, yeah. And I you, remember that from uh, the DC uh fighting games yeah in in justice games yeah Yeah. it's the the same setup and that works really well too because it's it's one story told over time from multiple different perspectives and it it gives you a chance to play as not everyone but almost everyone Mm -hmm. and let you see like how they play and like maybe you can pick a favorite character from there to then play in like you know the multiplayer and tournament and things like that but yeah so I remember you really liking this game. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do like, despite my troubles with like the story mode and like, you know, the online stuff, it's a very good game. And I would definitely recommend it to people who like who want to play a Mortal Kombat game. I don't necessarily think it's the best of the modern Mortal Kombat. I still think that's 2011. Wow. Keep in mind, I have not played Mortal Kombat 1 yet. Um, but this is like, this is a very I haven't good heard fun good things game. about 1. Neither have I. Yeah. So, and I'm not looking forward to playing it. Um, but. If you do like, this is always on sale, even on the Switch. Um, and it, there's a there's a download there's a downloadable content for it with an additional story chapter where you play as Shang Tsung, and Shang Tsung. This is the best part. He's played by the guy who played him in the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. Oh my god! Yeah, and he does the whole thing. He still got it. <laughs> uh, the game is ten bucks. Yeah, was fifty. Yeah, it's ten bucks on the Switch. Uh, I don't know why it's telling me I need to give my birthday. <laughs> uh, on Steam, it is a full fifty. Damn! And there's bundles that go all the way up to a hundred dollars. Yeah, you can buy it with Injustice Two. Why would I do that? In case you want to also play Injustice Two, Injustice Two is also very good. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, carry- right, ten bucks. I think worth it. Yeah. Uh, Kari Hi- uh, Hiroyuki Tagawa is Shang Tsung. He played him in the original Mortal Kombat movie, and he plays him again, young and old, in this game. I will say, when he he does the, he points to the camera and goes, "Your soul is mine." He still got it. <laughs> it still gives me goosebumps. It still works really well. The game had a lot of fun DLC characters. Uh, Spawn was one of the characters. That's why McFarlane oh, Toys yeah. made all the action figures. Um, the Ninja Turtles. No, that's Injustice. Fuck! This had Terminator, not voiced by Schwarzenegger. Rambo, voiced by Stallone. Robocop, oh voiced by Peter Weller. So, oh my god. And of course, other characters from Mortal Kombat history, but who gives a shit about them? And the whole gimmick is the gore and stuff. Yeah, it goes into like bullet time and you yeah. see like people's heads explode and stuff. Yeah, it... it like, I'm not one of those people who gets, like, squirmish with gore and stuff. It's just too much. It, yeah, like, it, Maybe it we're just old point. now, but it's just too it, much. No, because like... Because what happens is you you have a standard match and moves that occur during the match would have been a fatality in the last game. And like it just it desensitizes you to like the impact of what the yeah. violence should have. That by the time you actually get to the fatalities, they have to be so outlandish and cartoonish and over the top. It's not like effective anymore. If anything, it's just it's just funny. And like, yeah. it really shouldn't be funny. It should be like, like it horrifying. Should be the, it should be the yeah. end. The the it ending. should be the yeah. end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't know. All right. So uh, recommend. 
Yes. Uh, do recommend. For it, 10 bucks, I mean, why not? 10 bucks, yeah. And look, you can play it on everything. If you have a Switch, play it on the Switch because it works. And well, it works it's really well. $50 on everything else. It's only 10 on <laughs> yeah. fucking Switch, so try that. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching the backlog. Yes. Thank you for watching the backlog. Come to a podcast sometime, though, and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Beat em ups in the chat says question for the show considering the current state of xbox versus ps5 is it likely we will see bob play val tonight <laughs> <laughs> also hi will miss you miss you too buddy uh i have to record a video today <laughs> but i can be swayed uh all right let's look at april fool stuff i put this in okay just now let's see what you got oh this is just an ign article Here's all the April Fool stuff that happened. I didn't see this exclusive Virtual Boy Pro reveal. This is IGN. This was IGN's April Fool's Day thing. Right I, over it. Yeah, they had some. Cra- they've had some crazy ones over the years. They they have. Yes, I didn't actually hear about a lot of these. Uh, Pokemon <laughs> Sleep Tournament. I saw this on TikTok, and I thought that uh, this was a real tournament, and I skipped right over it. Yeah, I didn't know this was uh, Pokemon. I was like, Pokemon Company would not do. An April Fool's joke, and I just skipped right over it. But they did. But they did apparently. Uh, Elden Ring has a new expansion pass, but it's not what you think it is. What is it? Oh, it's literally expanding. <laughs> the, the words are expanding. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's funny. Cyber- this was funny. Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is getting a limited <laughs> time floppy edition that comes with ninety seven thousand six hundred and nineteen floppy disks. I kind of wish they actually went ahead and did this just because I want to see like the truck that delivers all of this. There's a video to be had where somebody does. Yeah. But how do you get it to compile is the problem. Yeah. Because it has to be functional. Yeah. Just putting it on the floppy disks isn't enough. It has to actually work. Yeah. Well, like even back in the day, like when games shipped on five floppy disks, like it would install part at a time onto the hard drive and then you had a play desk for yeah. validation so how do you break the game up into 97,000 different parts is the problem yeah alright uh, move, al- move aside DLC Sega reveals cartridge loadable content kind of wish this was a thing I mean it kind of was a thing back in the day we're excited to introduce the next innovation in gaming cartridge loadable content lock on technology was just the beginning what's lock on technology that's what they called oh connecting sonic 2 or sonic 3 to sonic and knuckles uh insert a second third fourth cartridge to load (laughs) new features like never before visit your local blockbuster on april 1st 1991 to check it out Uh, and then they have a picture of one of the what do they call it? A lock-on content? Uh, cartridge loaded con- loadable content. Releasing with big head mode and Sonic the Hedgehog cartridge and the Sonic... Releasing with big head mode and the Sonic the Hedgehog cartridges to enhance your Sonic the Hedgehog experience. Each cartridge sold separately. And here is Sonic with big head mode. Yes. This is one of those situations where they should release the ROM. Absolutely. Just put yeah. the ROM out. Maybe just make it level one or something. Mm-hmm. But come on. Uh, that's cool. Remember, I was reminded that last year, uh, Sega did uh, the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then what's this? Duck side announced? Daisy. Oh, who cares about this? Daisy meets Rust, but you play as a duck. Okay, I care about Daisy now. Yeah. Uh, the Razor Cthulhu <laughs> gaming chair with eight AI arms ready to do your bidding. So if you ever wanted to be Doctor Octopus. Is he getting jerked off? Probably. He's getting, getting jerked he's, off. He's 100% getting jerked off. Uh, I saw, maybe they'll have Corsair. Corsair did a video where they had like cat. Yeah. They had like cat accessories. Yacht Club. I didn't see Yacht Clubs. After making games like Shovel Knight, Yacht Club's second biggest passion is skincare. Okay. Now accepting new clients. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Arma or Reforger Tiny Wars brings war to a much smaller world. Was, oh, it's like it's, it's like Army Man, Army Man, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a series that fascinates me. Army Man, yeah, why was that popular? I don't know. And they like it, they have like a hundred games for it, and then just dropped off the face of the earth because they they oversold it, I guess. Uh, then we got Pal World Dating Sim, okay. 
Among Us is letting us kill others with very long necks. Oh, God. Okay. Power Wash Simulator is adding a dirt mode to let you ruin everything. <laughs> so just the opposite of power washing. That should just be a mode. They should <laughs> yeah. just put that in the game. What else? Now I'm skipping around. Minecraft. Potato is love. Potato is life. Potato is power. Welcome to the poisonous potato dimension. Transport players to the poisonous potato dimension. Okay. Getting less and less creative here. Uh, <laughs> Sonic Man from 2006. Sonic the Hedgehog is the new Sonic ambassador. It's about time he got his recognition. I'm just skipping around. Yeah. Now. Overwatch, the hero balance changes you've been waiting for. Jump in next week for the most balance updates. And what are you, just Torbjorn the whole time? Uh, I think you get googly eyes. Oh, you get googly eyes. Okay. Uh, and I guess that's it. That's all yeah. I've really seen. I actually, honestly didn't see many of those. Oh, there's also... Uh, there, there there were some more. There is a re there's this one, which is uh, Bokhtera, I think mm -hmm. it's called. Bat Bat Botticera. I can't pronounce this right. It is a uh it's one of those friggin' OS's emulate. Right, right. They said that they were getting rid of all Nintendo emulators on their on their uh mm -hmm. on their OS. Uh and then it was found out that it, it was in fact an able joke. Yeah. Uh and Retro Game Course said uh seems to be a rather mean-spirited joke and you know what it's a little kind of like thumbing your nose at nintendo and i don't yeah. i don't think they should have done that no they're they're basically like <laughs> asking for trouble yeah that i think that was that was uh and on the same vein here's uh bob wolf over here uh tweeted a picture of a copyright removal from the pokemon company uh, saying that one of his videos about the battery swap for the uh, original Pokemon got copyright striked by uh, the Pokemon company. And the reason for removal was, you got to stop talking about all games, man. Just let the batteries die. We just want to move on. And they're bad games anyway. Like, why would anybody even want to play them? We have new ones that are pretty good. And actually, a lot of people like them. You had me for a second with this. <laughs> Not that it was actually from Nintendo, but like somebody was like abusing the copyright strikes to like get it. You know? a, a surprising amount that's... of people believe this. Yeah. Well, because I mean, you have featured Pokemon ass in a video, so. Yeah, but why would they? The content used thing here is. <clears throat> it, like, it, you, they wouldn't put po They wouldn't acknowledge that Pokemon ass exists. The the, well, the thing is like. Because I know the copyright strike system on YouTube has been abused by yeah. like bad actors before. I, I understand. Like, yes, they would like do something like that. Also, the video URL is uh, never going to give you up. Right. Anyway, also, finally, are they or are they not <laughs> married, Shane and Courtney from Smosh? I'm still processing this and working we have this. to somehow get in contact with them and demand answers That's what uh i'm do. sure everybody's trying to demand yeah. answers i've been through the tiktok rabbit hole right i'll just have to see if they announce anything officially on on official smosh content yeah their chemistry is just so good right so i hope it makes so. sense yeah all right uh moving on oh i, I also added this kind of last minute uh okay. Hollow Knight Silk Songs April Fool's Day update is real. So uh, th there, on April Fool's Day, it was revealed that Hollow Knight Silk Song had a storefront on the Microsoft Store or something. I'm going to read the right. article. Okay. Uh, Silk Song passed five years in development earlier this year and foolishly hoping for an update on the game, especially a release day, has become a running joke. Every time a showcase from Xbox or Nintendo comes around, so it perhaps unsurprisingly that as the page made its way around social media alongside numerous April Fool's Day jokes from the, in uh, the industry, fans were initially reluctant to believe the page was genuine. It is indeed real, though. Unfortunately, there's still no release date. How do they know that it's real? Uh, it, it was the Xbox store page. Right. To a sausage? To assuage fans i hate i hate kotaku <laughs> again it's their wordplay is the reason why people don't like them to assuage fans xbox product marketing manager tau sila 
posted on X, formerly Twitter, saying that, no, this isn't an April Fool's joke. The Hollow Knight Silk Song wishlist page really is up on Xbox. Other people, including the person responsible for marketing and publishing at developer Team Cherry, also posted the link. Ah, the fuck out of here, Taco Bell. The link to the store page. While store pages on Steam, PlayStation, and Nintendo already existed, the addition of the Xbox page gives fans hope as the game is set to release day one on Game Pass. That I didn't know. Uh, so yeah, why wouldn't it be on Xbox? It just makes sense why they would yeah. make an Xbox page for that. People just want to hear anything about Hollow Knight. Yeah. Song. They're clamoring for an update on that. I hope this game is good. It, it has to be. We're getting to <laughs> the know? point now where yeah. it's taken so long that it, there is potential that the game comes out and it doesn't live yeah. up to expectations. All right. Plowing through the rest of the news. Yes. Uh, what are we up to? Jim Ryan is like, yo, actually it was 160 yes. million. Jim Ryan Minutes. on his final days as PlayStation president and CEO on, on, his death on, the, <laughs> on the latest episode of the PlayStation podcast <laughs> said that the PlayStation 2 has sold 160 million units lifetime. Since when does PlayStation have a podcast? Why are all these consoles getting podcasts? I don't know. I guess because they want to... Wanted... Let's keep it to... <laughs> Let's keep it to white men, okay? <laughs> no consoles. Just human white White men. men. <laughs> Uh, the worst kind of men uh, <laughs> alright so Jim Ryan says uh, 160 million units of the Playstation 2 were sold uh, the, the last official figure provided by Sony Interactive Entertainment is more than 155 million units as of March 31st 2012 but the PS2 wasn't discontinued until 2013 uh, This a lot of people were just saying that like you know, the Switch is clearly going to hit um, the PlayStation 2 numbers, like, relatively soon within the next couple of years. And people are just like, this is just Jim Ryan trying to move the goalposts just a little bit. absolutely is Jim Ryan right out the door coming in and saying that uh, he's dropping this little news yeah. just to be like, fuck you guys, we did it. Yeah. And fuck you, Nintendo, you're not going to make it up So. There. Officially, Sony said that the PlayStation 2 has sold 155 million units as of March 31st, 2012, but they did not officially discontinue the PlayStation 2 until 2013. I highly doubt within the one year, the PlayStation, because 2013 was the year of the PlayStation 4. I highly <laughs> doubt in that time frame, they sold 5 million units. So Spawnwave tweeted, uh, this is actually not surprising and 160 million PS2 sales was an assumed number for a few years now. I don't know. I don't know where anybody assumed that. Right. Uh, based on trailing shipments after Sony stopped officially reporting numbers for the console in 2012. But that's still a, that's a lot of units in a year. Yeah. It's still a lot. I mean, I mean, there's going to be some trickle. Yeah, of know? course. going to be some dribble. But yeah, I don't. Uh, it, it's interesting to come out and be like, yeah, of course it sold ten million more units yeah. in, in, a, in the final year. But I mean, there were a lot of people still buying games for PS2 and yes. stuff because they just didn't want to buy a whole new console. Yeah, and because it, everything was cheaper and stuff. Yeah, and like you know, also like other markets, like I know uh, Brazil and like mm -hmm. other like you know. I don't want to say third party, third, third world countries, but like, you know, countries that are not as like affluent as like the United States and Japan. And yeah, Europe. no, I understand. So. Also, yeah, there's just a lot of it's some other countries have a lot less money and charge way more money for the imports and stuff. Right. So like, it's no wonder that games are not thriving in those countries. Yeah. And why they would keep older consoles and stuff. Uh, this was gonna be tweet of the week, but uh, you stole it and made an article, so here you go. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> how can I not? Waffle House is one of those uniquely American institutions turned memes. The 24 7 chain, not only a place where you can order breakfast uh, at 3 a.m., but where unruly customers have been known to show up, uh, ready to throw hands. Uh, <laughs> give it a Katsuhiro Arada said, okay, I will only ask once about this request. 
why do some communities send me requests for quote <laughs> waffle house <laughs> please be sure to explain the basis for the request including the original story history and background i look forward to an explanation from someone who knows more basically all right tldr People want Waffle House to be a level in Tekken, so they asked <laughs> the series head Katsuhiro Harada uh, to put it in Tekken, and he's like, Why? He's like, what the fuck is, what this? is this? What is Waffle House? What's the cultural significance of Waffle House? Which, which le leads me to believe he's actually considering it. <laughs> He's like, something's up with this Waffle House. I gotta know the, more. The question is now, are they just going to do a generic waffle-based eatery? Yes. Or are they actually going to go to Waffle House Incorporated and say, can we license your restaurant for a level in our fighting game? <laughs> because your establishment is very popular for fist fights in real life. And... You know, Waffle House might just be like, you know what? <laughs> Go for <laughs> they it. They should. They should they lean really into it. Should. I like this one because this is your average Waffle House yes. employee and it's fucking the girl deflecting the chair. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, man. It, it's it's amazing and actually, again, has potential to be in a DLC of some yes. kind. It, yes. I, uh, I, like, I'm not... A Tekken guy. This mock-up looks great. I will 1,000% buy Tekken 8 <laughs> if Waffle House is a level. He's the guy to do it. He would, yeah. he would absolutely I know. do it. All right. Uh, anyway, Power World loses 97% of people or players or whatever. All okay. right. Uh, when Power World launched January 19th, it quickly skyrocketed to one of the most popular games ever released on Steam. Um According to Steam database, Powwalt has lost 97% of his peak player count on Steam. In fact, since the beginning of March, when player counts were still hovering around 275,000 daily players, the game was consistently losing thousands of players per day, down to a recent 24-hour peak of 69,850 as of this writing. I don't. That's not surprising, right? Here's here's the thing. Here's what I here's why I want to put this in. That's all we really need to talk about from the article. It's become a trend recently in games journalism, the most evil of journalism, <laughs> um, to really like highlight player count of a game. Like if a game starts off at yeah. like a, a really high number of players playing a game, and then it like dips down like significantly months later, like they report on it. My question is. Is isn't that normal? Yeah, no, it's or, absolutely like, normal. I guess because this is a lot. It is a lot, but but I, but it, I feel like it's probably normal. It, it makes sense to me because Power World came out in January. People played it, they enjoyed it, and then they said to themselves, "Okay, four months is good. I'm ready to play something new." Also, there's like nothing to do in Power World. Yeah. It's like uh, you hop in for a little bit. I think the out. the mindset is like. You know, because publishers, you know, the AAA publishers, they they want to have forever games. Everybody wants to have yeah. their forever game. Yeah. Their Fortnite, their um, their Valorant, their whatnot, and those games have player counts that are very high, consistently. And you know, if a if an online game has a dip in player count, that's concerning. But that's a if a single player game has a dip in player count after like several months on the market that just means people are done with the game yeah but like this is a problem with the games industry as a whole everybody's trying to be that diamond in the rough that has millions of players every single right. day and that's just not ever gonna happen yeah it, it's, it's just it's like a, this game should have never had 2.1 million players ever right like this game was supposed to be a much smaller game than it ended up being so the fact that it only has 69,000 people playing it right now is still incredible. Yeah. I just, you know, I hate comparing games to movies, but like it, it's inevitable. You look at like, you know, when a movie is number one at the box office one week and then it's like, you know, number two the next week, you know, people don't automatically go, oh, the bad news for this movie is not number one at the box Guess office no anymore. no one's watching yeah, Star Wars yeah. anymore. It's Jesus like, no, Christ. Dude. Like, no. They already watched it. Yeah. Everyone saw it already. Now there's something new this week. They want to see the new thing. I don't want to blame games journalism specifically. It's people 
talk about people talk about it. People eat this shit up. Yeah. It, it's it's the fault of everybody else who's like, oh, look at Power World. It's, yeah. It looks like it's dying. But really, I mean, this is just the trajectory. Yeah. And again, they made all their money. They right. they would they never expected to make this much money anyway. So it's mm -hmm. still a massive success to them. Okay. Uh let's go back to breakfast related yes. news. <laughs> Let us do that because IHOP's new Sonic inspired menu is real and not an April Fool's prank. I want this. Uh, we're I believe we're going on Thursday. Uh, our parents want to take their grandkids to IHOP, so we want to tag along. Wait, you're song. going. You're going at the ass crack of dawn. No, I we're going to like it. ten, I think. That's the, the, that's the ass crack of dawn. <laughs> because mom's coming, and you know she doesn't wake up for anything. <laughs> So, April, so which one are you going to get? Uh, let's see. Do you remember when we were kids and mom wouldn't let us get anything other than the 222? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but it was called something fucking dumb. It was. The Rudy Tooty Fresh and no, Fruity. No, no, no. no that's a no, different that's, thing. That's a Denny's thing. No, it was called the 222. No, 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 no. Yes, Rudy yes, Tooty yes. Fresh and Fruity? That's, that's a Denny's thing, isn't it? No. <laughs> Either way, I'm, I'm fucking writing it down. It's IHOP. It is pretty IHop. fresh and fruity. Okay, no, because but that's not what mom would make us get. It was always apparently there were Lay's potato chip flavored Rudy two D fresh. And yes, fruity. that I knew. Okay, and we were always had to get the two pancakes, two ba pieces of bacon, and two eggs any style because back in my day it was like two dollars and twenty two cents. And that's the oh. only thing we were ever allowed to get at IHOP. I mean, that's it, the, the best one. Then. I know. <laughs> But mom knew she raised a waffle kid, and God forbid I wanted to have the waffles. Waffles at IHOP, not No, not no, great. fuck you. Waffles at IHOP are good, okay? They're better no, at the, the Waffle House. The problem with waffles, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I love waffles. Yes. Problem with waffles, you don't get all the crazy waffle flavors. You only get, the, you only get them with pancakes for some reason. Well, at the International House of Pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to want you to eat the pancakes. No, but like, I, I'm not getting a fucking Sonic Blue Blur special <laughs> waffle. No. According, the, and to be clear, this menu is just the regular ass IHOP menu. Just they put <laughs> Sonic characters next to everything. Yeah, it's Tails it's is the, 222. Tails 222, Sonic's Blue Blur special, which is just the blueberry pancakes. Yeah. Um, Knuckles, who has the only lunch item, is the chicken sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a chicken sandwich. Uh, Shadow's Chaos Chocolate Pancakes, chocolate which are just pancake. the chocolate chip pancakes. Amy's Sweet Strawberry Delight. There's your fucking waffle yeah, right you there. Yeah, you get that? No, because I don't like strawberries. What the fuck? <laughs> you got to get one of these. And Eggman's Eggs Benedict. I, I like would, Eggs Benedict. I would honestly, out of all these, probably the Shadow's Chocolate uh, Pancakes, not the Tails 222 because I, I got too much childhood trauma. <laughs> I got too much generational trauma I'm dealing with here. And nobody's made a movie about so, that. So mom has to get the tails. Mom to, to has to get that. the tails. I'm okay. going to force our okay. mother and I will film it and I will put it on the Wolf Den TikTok. Okay. I recently learned that the Eggs Benedict was created in New York. Yeah. But, all right. Because a guy, New York. How you doing? Because a guy named Benedict stumbled into the Waldorf Astoria the restaurant or whatever right. and said, I'm hungover. Give me all of these salty foods okay and that's how the eggs benedict there you go and there you go you learned something here at the wolf then yeah who said you want to learn anything <laughs> here so yeah this is uh kind of stupid because it's all fucking stuff that right but it's have. all sonic themed so yeah. give me give me waffle house yeah uh okay microsoft is working on an xbox AI chat box microsoft is currently testing a new ai powered xbox Who's chat this guy of uh, that's that's him oh okay uh, sources familiar with Microsoft's uh, plans tell The Verge that the software giant has been testing embodied AI character that animates when responding to Xbox support queries. Um, oh. This writer understands the, uh, this Xbox AI chat is part of a larger effort inside Microsoft to apply AI to its Xbox platform and services. The chatbot is connected to Microsoft support documents for the Xbox network and ecosystem and can respond to questions and even process game refunds from Microsoft support website. 
Uh, Microsoft expanded the testing tool, the testing pool for its Xbox chatbot uh, more broadly in recent days, suggesting that this prototype Xbox support virtual agent may one day handle support queries for all Xbox customers. Um, so it's just basically a customer service bot. It's not even like anything cool, like yeah. game help. You know, it's literally just, you know, replacing customer service. Yeah, they're just slapping AI in there. I and mean, this is a thing that already exists on every other website. Yeah, I don't. Every time I have to return something on Amazon and it doesn't just automatically do the return, I have to talk to a little bot. Yeah. You know, I hate that because like now Amazon has like, you know, when you search like what they go into their search box on a product page and like you search for like what the reviews say or like, you know, questions answered, it defaults to like the AI answer. Uh, and it's like it's just so generic like you have to like scroll yeah. down more to get specifics on like what you're looking for yeah i don't like that yeah i mean i wouldn't i, I wouldn't call this gloom and doom this is just i mean everybody's doing it this. is it's not but like i just hate that like microsoft is so bullish on ai right now they, like, ha they have to be they're a tech company yeah you know? but by the same time like they don't have to be this bullish on it like they don't have to start integrating it into Xbox, a product that they already have a hard time like keeping up with as it is. If all right, this past year or two, the, the artificial intelligence has had like a big boom. Yeah. If that boom never existed, this would probably still happen because there's just everybody's doing this with customer service. Right. Everybody's putting the most the most responded answers or the most the most asked questions. Yeah. They're building answers for it yeah that's not necessarily artificial intelligence they're just taking artificial yeah. intelligence and injecting it into a thing that already exists anyway uh that's all the news yes uh did you put this here i put this in here. oh let's do this for a third time Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! this is kane burrow to the tune of we didn't start the fire <laughs> oh god <laughs> Futurama, Max Payne, Red Faction, Blood Rain, Crazy Taxi, Hurdy Gurdy, Mister S Mosquito, Mosquito, Tekken Five, Res Gun, The Simpsons, Hit and Run, Madagascar, Mercedes, Zapper, Maximo. Do, 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 That's pretty do, do, good. Do, do. That's pretty good. Yeah, some banger games in there too. I must say. Yeah, that's yeah. some banger. <laughs> that fucking probably took forever. <laughs> oh wait, is this somebody doing it? Please tell me. That's probably didn't come through the stream, but yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, Billy Joel, Long Island's greatest export. That's it. That's all. That's we, that, That's that, all the that Long Island has to offer <laughs> nowadays. All right, uh, now we're gonna talk to you guys real quick. Yes, starting off with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Them Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Wolf Them Podcast. Oh God! Somebody in the chat. Uh... Oh, somebody in the chat, I missed it. Oh, King Wizard, did you finish the Gotcha SP? Yes. Uh, well, left on the D-pad still doesn't work, but uh, I'm working on the video for it, and uh, tomorrow, like, when I'm done shooting all the B-roll and stuff, I'm going to open it back up and try to fix the case, and then I'll try to fix the uh, D-pad as best as I can, but I don't want, I'm afraid I'm going to ruin it before I shoot the B-roll, so I want to get all that out of the way before I uh, fuck with it more. On that note, did you fix Will's Steam Deck? No. That's going <laughs> to be a big undertaking because I think, again, I think that there's a short in it. Okay. That's going to be a whole situation. I still have the ticket open, so I could just, like, bite the bullet and spend the $200 on Steam, but I don't want to do that. No, that's insane. Yeah. Because it's $300 for that Steam Deck. I yeah. Think. So, like, why? Why yeah. would you spend that much money? Uh, the... the that's insane to me. Um, where are we at? Where uh, last week's Wolf yes. Den Pop? Uh, we got Delecti, who says, I'm so curious, is the backlog intro pre-recorded, or do you guys just frantically scream each week to introduce it? I'm guessing the former, but I love that mental image. So why don't you dissect all of the backlog yes. intros yes and see if there's a difference 
I'll break the illusion <laughs> a little bit. I didn't even tell you what no that it just kind of happened. Yeah, you started doing it, and then I felt like I needed to jump in and do the same. I listened back to the first one, and yeah. I think you. It didn't take you any time at all to just be on to just do it. I think it took me. So I missed. I think the first backlog right is four. Yes, I missed the first one. I said the second one, and then you jumped in on the third one and did the okay. fourth one. Because in my in my memory, it took me like two episodes to get the rhythm right. Because I think I'm off beat on the first oh, two times. Maybe, but, like, but, but but the spirit was there yeah. immediately. Yeah. You did. You were caught off guard on the first one. Yes, but every other one, you know, because somebody this starts was, yelling. <laughs> this was not a disgust thing. No, this just no. This just happened. Anyway, Etre says, I think you are right, Will, because of course you yes. are. Uh, I played maybe halfway through Guardians of the Galaxy and dropped it because I got burned out. Excellent story, voice acting, and visuals, though. I will also say that I thought it was good enough to come back to. I still have it installed on my Xbox because of that. It is a good, it is unfortunate because it is a good story. It is like the acting is very good in it. Um, it, it is a pretty game, but. You know, just the the start and stop gameplay of it does like great on you a lot. I almost wonder if it's the type of game where like you just put it on like the easiest difficulty setting and just like blaze through it as much as you as it's fast be as you can. Fun on the yeah. Uh, Charlie Fenn says for Bob's list, Persona Three Reloaded has been really has been popular this year. Well, my list of what being the fastest selling Atlas game when they looked at the first week. Not sure he is into those games, but again, just with looking at this year as a whole, the beginning of 2024, oh, wasn't, hasn't been too bad. We have that Final Fantasy and Helldivers. It is the later half that I'm worried about. Oh, this year, Persona yeah. 3 came out. Yeah, mm -hmm. people seem to really enjoy yeah. that. Uh, Michael Chapman uh, says, I'd kill to have a handheld that could play all the Fable games. Yes. Because uh, those are all on Xbox. Oh, they're not on PC? I don't think so. Original Spiff says, for the record, I am overjoyed that Will finally has a new MacBook. I was about to ask if there was a donation <laughs> here we could start. <laughs> well, there might be, because I haven't paid my credit card yet. Oh, so God. we'll see. Uh, and remember, it's refurbished. <laughs> it's not new. Yeah, but it's still... I have not charged this since I got it. Isn't that you. fucked up? That's it's like insane. Like that yes. was the craziest thing about yes. this MacBook that I got. Oh my god! Because my old one, two hours. Yeah, I had two hours with it, and then I got this one, eighteen hours. Yeah, it's insane. Like it should be illegal. Well, how <laughs> good this battery is. That's why my uh, uh, Apple was like. Intel, we love you, but we gotta yeah. do our own thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we went from two to eighteen hours of yeah. battery life. Yeah, I never think about it. I've been on it all day, and yeah. I have uh, thirty percent left. Yeah. My battery has gotten a little worse, but still, I still rarely think about charging. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hopefully the battery lasts more cycles in in kind then. Oh, because it's refurbished? 18 hours, like, running prices or just running notes? No, just <laughs> fucking being around. Yeah. I did edit on a... Was it a Vegas flight? Yeah. A cross-country flight. I edited on a cross-country flight, and uh, I used 50% of the battery. Yeah. Doing video editing for, like, four or five hours. I will note that, like, because this is refurbished, it's not a new battery. So it's still, like, I think the original battery from this machine was made. Yeah. So it's been, like, the battery, it tells, Coconut tells you it's 172 days old. Um, and it's had nine load cycles. Like, charge cycles. Basically. That's not a lot. Yeah. That's barely any. Yeah. So it hasn't really been used. Yeah. Yeah. Intel MacBook batteries reached their life way too quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, original Spiff, thank you for the 24 months. Hell yeah for getting for going space black, too. I know. That was just luck of the draw. I kind of I want to take a picture uh, of the three colors lined up because yeah. we have 
all three colors now. <laughs> um, yeah. although, although this one is disgusting. My MacBook is absolutely. <laughs> I mean, trashed. I'm like waiting for this to get gross, but look at this. There's right like now. a. I don't. This just happened. This scratch yeah. down here. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't. I treat this thing like a like a tool, like a power tool. Right. Like this thing, I'm I'm holding it by the screen. Right no, now. I I treat this thing like it's made of glass. Like I, I am like so delicate with this. No, I'm I'm pretty forceful with it. Uh. Anyway, what's the YouTube chat looking like? How you guys doing? Hey, over everybody there? over there on the other side. Moon's over my hammy. <laughs> That's Denny's. That's Denny's. I used to drive all the way to Jersey just to go to Denny's. Yeah. Now there's Denny's all over Long Island, and I never go. Are there? Because, like, I don't see them anymore. Did they get rid of them? I know the one in Levittown isn't there anymore. That was the first one, and that was the worst one. Yeah, yeah. when they came to Long Island, yeah. they were horrible. And a lot of things did that. They would They would show up on Long Island, and then they would be horrible because they didn't have yeah. any, like, oversight. Uh, Denny's Fashion is on Long Island. Oh, here we go. It's uh, yeah. What's it's Denny's out in Center Reach? Fash- Center Reach. Yeah, oh, that's gonna be shit. Yeah. Wow, they got rid of the Denny's. Yeah, there are no more Denny's. They didn't do good because they suck. No. They were bad. Yeah. And we have IHOP, and we love IHOP. Yes. And IHOP is great. Yes. Oh, there's one in Brooklyn, uh, Jackson Heights. Okay. Go to Jackson Heights. Yeah, I'm not going to jack. I'm not. I hop is better anyway. Yeah. When we were in Japan, uh, Wood and everybody, uh, Wood really wanted to go to Denny's because there's a Denny's by our right. hotel. He really wanted to go, but the the hotel we were staying at had a buffet that was free. Yeah. And it was amazing. <laughs> and I wanted to eat there every day. Right. And then he wanted to go to Denny's, and I was like, eh, I'm gonna eat at fucking the buffet. And I had a great time. Yeah. Um. But Denny's in Japan is a little different. Like it has, yeah. They have the normal stuff, but then they also have like ramen and shit. Bob, you should do a video about hacking a Wii. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I had no experience with that sort of thing at all, and I found the process extremely easy. Also, now that Citra is dead, how would you go about emulating 3DS games on the Steam Deck? Uh, I talked about modding the Wii in my video about um emulation does not equal piracy that video i talk about it a little bit i don't go into too much detail right. about it uh how would i go about emulating 3ds games on a steam deck i would find a build of citra it's it's still easy to yeah get your hands on if you google enough and dodge the nefarious download links holy lettuce do you guys think that nintendo will ever remake the og mario 64 ocarina of time and majora mask games i think they should after bob's old video on mario 64 needing a remake it made me wonder why they haven't done it by now they gotta know it would sell well i don't know nintendo's not really in the business of like remaking games you know they rarely do i think they will remake all of those games eventually but it might be many years down the line yeah it might be decades down the line right they will eventually remake all those games i do think that mario 64 has potential to be remade by them yeah uh ocarina of time and majora's mask uh would be a lot more difficult to remake because you have to make that way more grand than you would have to make just a mario 64 remake also technically they did remake mario 64 yeah and technically they remade Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Yeah, technically. Yeah, it's like... I mean, the Mario 64 DS was, like, actually a remake. Right. Um, I'm annoyed about having 3DS games, but not the DLC. Seems I need to hack my 3DS. Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. Denny's has, unfortunately, gone downhill, at least the ones near where I live. Apparently, a lot of people are agreeing that Denny's sucks. And I think Sonic agrees, too. Yeah. Uh... Do you think we'll ever get a winning post in English again? Winning post? What the fuck is that? Uh, it's a game series. It's um, horse racing. It's one of those like uh, thoroughbred horse racing simulators that's popular in Japan. Is it the fucked up horse racing where they're like... Where it's like all weird? Uh, no, this looks like a straight up 
Sim. Guys, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Tremendous 12 <sighs> is Perkins. Perkins? Will doesn't like Perkins. I almost died in a Perkins. What, wasn't it twice? Once. <laughs> I thought tw two times you almost, you almost was choked it two on your chicken. I remember, I remember one. No, it was bacon the one time. <laughs> oh, I thought yeah. it was chicken. No. <laughs> Very traumatic for Will. Yeah. Uh, weird as in having to... What? <laughs> what the fuck's going on with you people? Why are we talking about horses so much? I don't know. You got one horse person in here. Uh, All the horse people leave. This is not a horse <laughs> person friendly podcast. How many times do we need remakes? I saw, I didn't watch the video, um, but I saw there was a video posted on like how to do a Resident Evil 5 remake. Because oh. there's been talks of like, you know, they did, Capcom did all the other Resident Evils. Resident Evil 5 is next. How do you do it? Because the game wasn't really that good to begin with. And also, too, it's problematic as the kids say because of the whole africa setting my solution is you don't remake it stop remaking resident evil <laughs> games you just put out resident evil 9 and you just move on with your life you know yeah we did we did the three in succession great fantastic now let's go on to resident evil 9 and that's it move forward i thought resident evil 5 was fun resident evil 5 as a game is okay it's a. It's, it's not, worse than four. It's worse than four. But I enjoyed it. it. It's definitely it. It wants to be an action game, but it's still stuck in the survival horror mentality. Mm -hmm. So like, ammo is scarce. Um, you can't move and shoot at the same time, which would have been beneficial to the gameplay of it. But you can't do that. Um, I think that's part of why those games were good. Is is that there was weird compromise gameplay like the fact that you can't move and shoot because it made it really stressful yeah but the compromises were detrimental to the enjoyment of resident evil 5 <coughs> we were in a time where things were being standardized across third person and yeah. first person shooters and this is a game that was still had an old mentality but I, yeah. again i think that's why i liked those games was because of that I, yeah. and also i think that the game the game was trying to be like other shooters, but also yeah. still had those weird limitations. So that was kind of to its detriment. But uh, it was okay. Like it gets, it gets a lot of uh, flack that I think is uh, maybe a little too much. So right. I think it was better than what people are saying that it was. Yeah. It's just because all of the games previously were so good. Yeah. This was the worst of them so far yeah. up until that point, but it still wasn't a terrible game. Right. Uh, but yeah. I think it's... I mean, we used to say this about Resident Evil 4. We used to say Resident Evil 4 didn't need a remake, and then we got the Resident Evil 4 remake, and we're like, all right, maybe this is actually... I mean, I still maintain it didn't need a remake, but, like, it was a very good remake. Yeah. Uh, Resident Evil 5... Because also, too, the problem is, like... Resident Evil 5 might not be good enough to warrant a remake. <laughs> Resident Evil 5, like, you know, at what point do you, like, stop make, re remaking these games? Like, Resident Evil 5 is still widely available. It's still readily playable. There's nothing really needing an update to Resident Evil 5. There's, like, no reason to update the gameplay of Resident Evil 5. I want a Code Veronica remake. That's, like, the only one that, yeah. like, would need a remake. Because that's a mainline story Resident Evil game. And it's still stuck in the fixed camera angle uh, mentality. Yeah, I want that. All right, thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. We also stream there uh, live on uh, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. I forget to say that sometimes, but we do that. We stream both on Twitch and YouTube, and the archives go on YouTube. Yeah, so you can watch it wherever you want. Yes, if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, however, we are also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible.com, and other. <laughs> no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us, because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, I'm still looking for somebody to rate here. <clears throat> you, we always rate the same people. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, I will be probably live on Thursday, uh, and I will have a video hopefully on Thursday. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm a little late getting the footage over uh, about this gotcha SP that I'm still 
working on. Um, God, who's online here? Uh, here you go. Go watch Beta 64. Uh, he is brain exercises with Dr. Kawashima. Oh. Is that not brain? Is that different than brain training? Maybe, I don't know. Brain age? Whatever. Go watch him. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday, probably. Uh, bye. Bye.